Well, in my opinion, Sri Lanka's struggles have just begun. On a long winded road towards recovery, and in that process, our nation's leaders are asking you and me to pay the hefty bill of fixing a broken economy. If you ask a four year old why Sri Lanka is like this, that child will tell you it's because of the decisions made by the big guys. So many wrong policy decisions made in the past 75 years got us to this point. That's a fact. As a nation, the question right now is whether we will do more of the same or whether are we going to think afresh and think in a manner that will benefit all of us. Sri Lanka is a democracy, meaning we've given our permission via a ballot to the elected individuals to govern this country. Our nation's leaders, we call them. They are the keepers of the nation, not the owners. But since the 80s, these leaders have acted as owners, not keepers. Yes, these very leaders have run this country to the ground. Basically, we work hard and earn, and they live lavishly. In 2023, we know our money has less monetary value. Our savings has become lesser in terms of, it, of their worth and taxes have gone really high thanks to the prescription by, by the IMF. We will see possible CEB price revisions in the future. Pay taxes kicks in this month and the other taxes have gone up to an unbearable level. Every politician is talking about how Sri Lankans, you and I, have to tighten our bells and find ways and means of paying the price for their erroneous policies for over 75 years. It's funny, isn't it, that all these big kahunas up top, be it the liberal thinking think tanks, the typical political establishment, the top tier 1%, every elitist, they are cunningly foregoing mentioning anything about increasing wages for you and me. So at least we can live our lives in a bearable manner. Sri Lanka has enough wealth to go around, but like in the rest of the world, it's just circulating at the top tier of our society. Yet to save the nation, the leaders have asked both parties the same amount to pitch in. So the daily income earners who earn the bare minimum and those who gain millions through our resources pay the same price. Is that a fair game? Living in Sri Lanka cannot be a miserable experience because if that's the case then leaving this nation would be the better option. But as many times I've mentioned, we do not have that luxury. So isn't it our duty to make this country a livable place for each and every one of us? If these taxes raised will help develop this country, build our way of life and increase the quality of the Sri Lankan experience, then I believe it's worth it. But the sad, the sad truth is that it won't. The taxes raised will be used to balance our country's budget deficit per the recommendation by the IMF. You can't kill the goose and expect it to lay more eggs. And that's precisely what's occurring right now. So it's up to us to think whether we are going to follow the same methodology promoted by the same goons who got us here. If that's the case, then expect the same result. When we as a nation desire a new outcome for our country, we have to break up with the old patterns. We'll be right back.